Carlos Alcaraz has one of the best tennis forehands in the world, and in this special lesson, you'll learn exactly how he does it. Let's uncover the secrets of his incredible power and spin together. First things first, I apologize that this footage is so distracting, but do your best to pay attention because we're about to take a deep dive into Carlos's forehand, starting with his grip. So as he hits this ball, we're going to zoom in and go forwards just a little bit. We get a really nice clear image here of where his hand is on the racket. And we can see that the big knuckle of his index finger right there is clearly on bevel number four, not the flat bevel number three on the side of the racket, that would be an Eastern forehand grip. This is a semi-Western grip, which provides Carlos with a great balance of power, meaning energy traveling through the ball, and spin, meaning energy traveling upwards past the ball, which we're gonna break down much more in just a couple seconds. First, let's dive into the power side of things. Take a look at how, as he's getting set up for this forehand, his belly button is pointing straight at the camera, and as we move forwards into this swing and he meets the ball, this is critical. Look at how now his belly button is facing forwards towards his target, towards the other side of the court. It's that transition of the biggest, strongest parts of his body that is really the engine of this swing. The rotation of his hips, his torso, his chest, his shoulders is the primary power source. And it's part of what makes up the kinetic chain, his entire body working together in the right order at the right time. And so the timing of this is critical, and this is what most tennis players mess up. When you look at everyday tennis players hitting a forehand, frequently at this point, at the point of contact, their body will still be partially sideways, or maybe even fully sideways, which means their arm has to produce all the energy to try to hit the ball. It also makes it impossible to hit the ball out in front, like Carlos is here. See the distance between his torso and the back of the racket? This gap is created by the circular rotation of his body, transitioning from a sideways position to a forwards position. If his arm just comes along for the ride, then he's going to have this space between his body and his racket. And unfortunately, a lot of tennis players and coaches focus on the space and they try to make the racket go further in front by using their hand and their arm, and it totally defeats the purpose because the use of their body is inadequate. To highlight this, I'm just gonna let the video play for a few seconds and keep your eyes on his belly button as he sets up and then transitions forwards. And you're gonna see a wide range of different contact heights here, different stances, different setups with his body, but they all have that thing in common. The belly button starting facing sideways, and by the time the ball touches the strings, his belly button is facing forwards because that core rotation has taken place. Another big element that gives him a lot of racket head speed and power is how he shifts his weight in his balance. This forehand he's about to hit, he's going to step in kind of more of an old school fashion with his stance and with his footwork. Look at his right foot, his back foot, how currently it's flat and planted on the ground and his left foot, his front foot, doesn't have much weight on it. And as we move forwards through this clip, I'm sorry, please ignore the, the rude person in front. Look at how he steps forwards onto his front foot and then as he makes his swing, his energy, his balance shifts forwards onto that front foot and now his back foot has little to no weight on it and his front foot has all of it. This is one additional way that you can provide more energy and force through the point of contact by transitioning all of your body weight into the shot. You can get more momentum, more speed, more energy but it's the rotation of the body that is the bigger element and I'll show you why in just a second. In this swing, he's hitting an open stance, which means his left foot is now further out to the side instead of landing in front of him. But notice how he's still starting with all of his weight and balance on his right foot and not very much at all on his left foot. And as we transition forward into the swing, watch how he's gonna hit. And as he rotates and unwinds his body through the point of contact, 
Watch how his momentum and his weight transitions over to his left foot. So he might not be stepping into the ball on this shot, but he's still managing his momentum and his energy from his right foot to his left foot dynamically as he hits. That helps the process of unwinding his body and helps produce a lot of racket head speed and power. Here's where things get really interesting. On this forehand, his momentum is actually gonna fall backwards. Watch this swing and watch how his hips and his body and everything is falling back as he hits the ball. And so on this particular shot, he's not using any shift of momentum or his body weight to generate any force or power through the point of contact because he's actively shifting away from the point of contact as he hits this ball. This is just a, you know, a practice session. And so he's playing an out ball back to his partner on the other side. But this situation and scenario pops up all the time in real life when our opponents hit a big, hard, deep, penetrating shot. And sometimes the best option is actually to back up and hit. But even though his momentum is traveling back away from the point of contact, watch how his belly button still turns and transitions. And he's still going to end up with his weight on his left foot because of that unwinding of his body, how his chest and his hips turn in a circle. And that's what really mostly propels the racket around his body. Is it helpful to transition forwards through the point of contact? Absolutely. But it's not always in the cards, depending on what type of shot our opponents hit us. If you'd like to continue learning how to hit your biggest, most powerful forehands ever, make sure to go to forehandpower.com, where I'll show you how in 15 minutes you can add 15 miles per hour to your forehand ground stroke by following a series of really simple drills that I use with my students all the time to get amazing results. The training is totally free, so make sure to go to forehandpower.com. Now let's talk about topspin, which is critical to your success because that forward rotation of the ball curves it down back into play, which allows you to hit the ball harder without it traveling too far and going out. And what generates that forward rotation of the ball is the vertical element of the swing. The more a forehand swing is focused on traveling just forwards, the more power or penetration the ball will have, but the less curve and safety will be built into the path of the ball. The more vertical the path of the racket is, the more of the racket's energy is going to go towards spinning the ball, turning it and rolling it forwards, which will give the path of the ball more curve and more safety. And so every swing has to have a good balance between power or forward energy and spin or upward energy. When you study world-class players like Carlos, you'll see that from the bottom of the swing to the top of the swing past the point of contact, there tends to be right about a 45 degree angle of the path that the racket is on. What that means is that about half of his energy or force is being propelled upwards past the back of the ball to spin it and curve it, and about half of his energy or force is being sent through the ball towards his target to give the ball the power and the speed and the penetration it needs in order to be effective against another world-class player. If on your forehand, you tend to kind of overspin the ball and everything's super loopy and super spinny and you can never put the ball away, then it means that your swing path starts too low and comes upwards too steeply. And on the other hand, if you struggle curving the ball and everything has a lot of power, but you miss tons of shots, then it means more than likely your swing path is too level and it's too flat. So you can make lots of power, but we never have the margin or the curve necessary to keep that power in play consistently. What's really interesting is seeing how a player like Carlos manages this among different contact heights. So here he's hitting a forehand at shoulder height. And if we go back to the bottom of where he drops the racket, you'll see his racket has a big gap on this particular forehand down below the point of contact. But I want you to look at the alignment of his racket and look at how level his shoulders are. Because this particular shot has a very high contact point, he doesn't need to point the tip of the racket very low to get it below the point of contact. And he doesn't have to do anything special with his body either because the ball is so high. So it's pretty easy to get the racket below the point of contact and then 
come upwards at that 45 degree angle in order to get the mix of power and spin that he needs to keep this ball in play. By the way, 45 degrees is just a, you know, a rough you know, ballpark. I like it just as a, a way to visualize the different directions of force, but there's obviously a million shades of gray in between the flattest you know, flat forehand and the spinniest heavy topspin forehand and there's tons of different variations and different angles that you can attack the ball at to get the whole range of different types of shots, depending on if you're in offense or a neutral situation or a defensive situation. On this forehand, he's hitting the ball at knee height. So totally different location. And let's go back in time a little bit and look at how he still achieves a full foot of drop with the racket face below the point of contact, which helps him get that space, that vertical space between the bottom of the path and the point of contact. And also look at the angle of his shoulders here. He's tilted and dipped his upper body again, to allow the racket face to get adequately low below the point of contact so that he can achieve the lift and the spin he needs to hit the ball hard because of his rotation, but also to get the curve and the shape he needs to keep the ball in play safely. Another thing Carlos does exceptionally well, even amongst his peers at the top of the tennis world, is his focus on the point of contact as he meets the ball. Watch through the point of contact how long his face stays there, fixed on the point of contact, which helps his balance, it helps his focus on the point of contact, it helps him be able to make cleaner contact and control his body without pulling his head up too soon because he's curious about where the ball is going. This is extremely counterintuitive for humans because we so badly want to know where the ball is going and we're sending all of this energy and force in one direction while our head and our face stay fixated and focused in another direction. And that's something that takes a tremendous amount of discipline and training and something that I think is well worth the time of most tennis players out there to try to develop. That being said, please know that just because you have superhuman ability to maintain your focus on the point of contact does not guarantee that you're not gonna shank the ball. Even in a super easy, just down the middle rally like this one that Carlos is engaged in, watch how his face stays fixed at the point of contact on this shot. He does a fantastic job of tracking the ball in, keeping his eyes at the point of contact through the point of contact and into his finish. But look at where the ball hits on this particular shot. He does not hit this ball cleanly. It hits off his frame on the bottom edge of the racket. Just because you miss hit and shank forehands doesn't mean that you're not necessarily watching the ball. He's an elite athlete, one of the best tennis players in the world, and even with all of his training and his talent, he still mishits shots, all tennis players do. And that's just part of tennis. It's okay, don't obsess over it. If you'd like to take a deep dive into mastering every element of your tennis forehand, then click the lesson that you'll see on the screen right now. It goes A to Z, step-by-step -step drills on how you can develop the power, the spin, the accuracy that you need to reach your goals on the courts. So make sure to check it out. Thanks so much for watching today. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you again soon.